Over a year ago, I bought the absolute cheapest power supply I could possibly find on Amazon, and understandably, I got a lot of pushback. So I decided to build that power supply into a 24-7 server, which ran the backend for $5PSU.com, where you could see just how long it had been running. It's been over 15 months now. Has it caught fire? Exploded? Ruined my entire PC? Nah, it's, it's running fine. But I do think there's a good amount that we can learn from this, so stick around. If you haven't seen the YouTube shorts covering this all, I'll give you a quick explanation. I did in fact buy the cheapest power supply I could find on Amazon for two reasons. First, I bought it because I actually needed another power supply at the time for various projects, and I just needed something simple and cheap. Second, I bought it because I figured it would make for a catchy title, and I would say it worked. Definitely not the worst $5 I've ever spent. But I definitely got a lot of comments talking about well, yeah, that. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Power supplies are an important component as they provide power to your entire system. Also, this was only a few months after Gamers Nexus had been digging into the whole gigabyte power supply exploding debacle. And I think exploding power supplies were just a bit on people's mind. I decided to get a bit cheeky though and built the $5 power supply into the ugliest server of all time, wrote some really bad code and made a website called 5 psucom where you could see the current uptime as well as the total lifetime of the server. That site was ugly though, and I really wish I had used Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace makes building your website a breeze, and with their Fluid Engine, you can make your website stand out with incredibly unique designs thanks to the ability to move, scale, and even overlap various blocks. You can start building pages from scratch or with one of the mini designer layouts, and then use the Fluid Engine to create, move, and layer different elements to make a website that fits your personality or brand. And the desktop and mobile versions are independent from each other, so you can create specific designs for either layout. You can go to Squarespace right now and get started with a free trial, and then whenever you're ready to launch your project or website, you can go to squarespace.com slash hardwarehaven to save 10% on your first website or domain. So get your website off the ground today with Squarespace. Okay, back to the whole power supply thing. So why is it still running? I mean, surely a $5 power supply couldn't run for 15 months straight. Well, yeah, it most likely would, and I imagine it would keep running for quite a bit longer. But before talking about it anymore, let's go grab it. All right, sorry about the poor lighting probably, but uh, this is my little closet. And down underneath here is the $5 PSU server it's sitting on top of an old compact desktop. Yeah, this is a, this is what things are like on my channel. But just to try and prove, not that I think anyone's really going to doubt me that much, but just to try and prove, I have $5 PSU pulled up here. I can refresh. Um, and there's a little bit of caching that happens. So I'm hoping that doesn't affect it too bad. But if I go here, Let the reset adds power. Okay, so it should be off. I'm gonna try refreshing. Oh, looky there. I was really worried the caching would get me, but there it is. I mean, I probably could have faked that somehow, but it's not worth it. So I'm gonna get this thing out of here and we're gonna get it dusted out because it hasn't been touched for a year and a half, basically. So we're gonna get this out, get it cleaned up and get that power supply out. I forgot it literally just hangs out the back. Not sure how dusty this thing's actually going to be. It's not too bad. I'm not sure how well you can actually see this. There's the power supply though. It's a little dusty. I'm sure it's quite a bit dustier on the inside. We might pop this thing open. I decided to go ahead and open up the power supply just to see what it looked like on the inside. 
And to do this safely, I used a resistor to make sure that the bolt capacitors were discharged and used a multimeter to double check and then had a look around. And while doing so, I did notice that a few of these capacitors were bulged or leaking like this one here. Okay, so why has this worked just fine for as long as it has? Well, first of all, it isn't garbage. Just because I bought it for $5 doesn't mean it's actually a cheap power supply. This came from an HP office PC, granted a pretty old one, but still a PC you might see in schools, offices, hospitals. And how often do you see those places experiencing explosions or fires from bad HP power supplies? Now, to be fair, this is pretty old, and I even found some bulged and leaking capacitors when I opened it up. So I imagine at some point in the next few months or years, this might meet its demise, but that still doesn't mean it's going to do so catastrophically. I also ran this system well within spec because like I mentioned, I only planned on using it for some low powered projects, which seemed to be a point that many people missed based on the comments, which brings me to why I really wanted to make this video. I think we can all learn a few things from this. First, you really shouldn't buy a $5 power supply, at least not unless you just plan on using it for a scrappy little project or for some reason want to make three YouTube videos about it. For the most part, it's probably worth spending a little bit more to find something not quite so old. Second, and much more importantly, I think we all just need to chill out a bit. I know the internet is the internet, and I'm not attempting to fix that today, but I think people, especially people in the PC and tech space, are just so quick to go after someone if they think they've made a mistake, and there's just no value to be had there. If you really want to make a difference, try having a conversation. I mean, I've learned so much over the last 18 months or so from incredible people in the comment section, and 99% of the time, they didn't start off by slamming down some gibberish in all caps or something. They just presented information in a way that was helpful, and I learned from it. That has value. And I think a big part of that was because I think a lot of those helpful people also don't assume they know everything. I mean, the subject matter, sure, but also my perspective or use case. This is really one of the most frustrating things I come across. Some people just seemingly can't comprehend that someone else might want to or need to use a piece of technology for a different reason than they would. Like with video transcoding, for example, I've gotten comments and even emails from people upset that I either talked or didn't talk about hardware accelerated transcoding. And I kind of get it. I mean, for the longest time for me, I never needed transcoding because I only watched lower resolution streams on devices in my house. So direct streaming worked just fine. And adding a GPU or something for hardware acceleration would be a waste. But I also know a lot of people either like to watch their library over cell networks or for a variety of other valid reasons have codecs that can't be decoded on a device they're using. And for some reason, people just can't comprehend that maybe someone else has a different need, application, or even just preference. And I really, really just don't get it. I know I can't fix the internet or people, but I do hope that maybe this video might help some of you watching to be slightly more open-minded to the idea that other people might have a different experience, perspective, preference, or level of understanding than you do. And that's okay. And I don't want to sound all high and mighty. Oh gosh, this power supply is still here. Yeah, I don't want to sound all, no, nah. I don't want to sound all high and mighty here because I'm talking to myself while writing this script. I've been guilty of doing exactly what it is that I'm complaining about right now. And I always want to get better too. That's really the whole reason I made Stay Curious sort of the hardware haven slogan. It's just as much a reminder for me as I hope it is for you. That's about all for, oh wait, what am I going to do with this? Well, I was actually just kind of leaning more towards putting it back in the $5 PSU server and seeing how long it would run. But especially after looking and knowing that there's leaky caps in there, I'm not really sure. Part of me tempted to actually try to repair this, just replace the caps and then get it back up and running or do something fun with it or just let it retire in peace. So let me know in the comments what you guys think I should do with the $5 power supply. It's going to be around in some way or another, but I'd love to do it in a way that you guys enjoy. So let me know in the comments. I think that's about it for now. So thank you guys for watching. Stay curious and I can't wait to see you in the next one.